so it's back out of the water, and it's from Marek's presentation, a little bit back to earth, uh, at least. Um, and yet, and yet, I don't represent a software company uh, or a technology firm as such. Uh, I don't represent uh, a manufacturer or even a contractor who has clear uh, cost savings benefit uh, and, and, and sales benefit from the digital construction opportunity. But still, in Solar, we firmly believe that software is coming to the construction industry in a big way, and it's going to change everything. So digital is very core uh, in our strategy. Uh, in Solar, I'm responsible for sales and marketing, uh, also business development and the digital uh, part of our business. Uh, and I joined Solar three years ago very much with the mindset that there is a digital uh, opportunity in construction, and this has very much to do with Solar. My background is actually IT. Uh, I, uh, I'm a, an engineer with a marketing degree. I spent 10 years in IBM with e-business and in the software division in Europe and in the US. Uh, I was heading up uh, Meconomy, which is an ERP company uh, that, uh, that sells solutions to uh, to a construction uh, or, or engineering uh, consulting firms uh, and to architects and, and other project-oriented businesses. And I've also worked with, uh, with small uh, tech startups. So, so my career has really been about um, helping companies improve their business through technology, uh, or as they say in IT, sales, uh, really. The the slide here and, and the title of my presentation, The Future of the Digital Supply Chain, it, it kind of promises a lot in terms of, you know, that I have all the answers to where this industry uh, is going. And I don't claim to have those. But what I can say is that in Solar, we've spent uh, a lot of effort pursuing the answer to where this industry is going and what it means for us. So this is really our business transformation story that I'm going to share with you. Most of you probably don't even know solar. You know, if you don't, maybe you think we produce solar panels. We don't. Uh, if you know a little bit about us, maybe you think we are a wholesale company, which we are not. But it's something we did call ourselves just a few years ago. What we do at our core is actually we do distribute installation uh, materials uh, to uh, contractors, to installers, so heating and plumbing, electrical, uh, all those types of things going into to buildings. Uh, we distribute them in Northern Europe, uh, and that's kind of the, the core of our business. But when you want to go on a business transformation journey, a very clear and defined role in the value chain can be very limiting. It can be almost like a trap. And if you try to Google wholesaler, uh, you find something like what you see up here. Uh, you know, stern-looking men smoking cigars with big bellies that shows that wholesale has been a good business, uh, you know, going back a hundred years. Um, you also uh, see things like... Uh, stores where craftsmen can go and buy their, the, the materials uh, and, uh, and, and get a cup of coffee uh, for free, they think. Uh, but we don't really see this as, as, uh, as a, a productive part of the construction value chain. So we've spent many years closing shops and turning the logistics around. You know, why do you drive to a, a shop uh, because you didn't plan? Why don't we actually turn that around and bring uh, the materials out to you, save you the time, make you a lot more productive? So that's really uh, how we see ourselves. And so what we did three years ago was we reframed our identity away from wholesale and into sourcing and services. All right. So we source materials on behalf of our customers and we deliver those 
uh, materials out to them with uh, a lot of services that, that make them more productive. That's essentially what sourcing and services are. So we see ourselves as someone who work very closely with our customers to understand how we can help them improve their business, become more productive. We understand their business needs, we understand their personal needs, and we apply technology uh, to, uh, to, to help them uh, with their business. And we are ready to challenge the status quo. That's really essentially how we see ourselves. So where sourcing and services uh, differs from wholesalers. Wholesale is really about representing uh, manufacturers in a certain market, taking their orders and delivering the materials out. Sourcing and services t turns that on its head because it's really about understanding what the customers need uh, and then uh, helping them uh, you know, use those products uh, with, uh, with your competences and the services, including logistics. It's a subtle difference, uh, but it really changes a lot when you do uh, business uh, transformation. It really helps uh, you start with the customer perspective, and that's the uh, starting point we took. When you then think about what uh, you know, needs to happen, what is this technology uh, doing? What's the, uh, what's the opportunity and what's the challenge? Then you can take it from a business perspective, understand what's going on, or you take it from a technology perspective. So let's start with that. You've seen many of these things today already, but let's start with looking at what technology does and how that comes a little bit closer uh, to business. So at the core, you have basically the notion that that processing power and data storage and bandwidth is just uh, accelerating, uh, you know, based on, on Moore's law, the fact that, that uh, the capacity doubles every 18 months. And that's a development on an exponential curve. And I, I don't know if you've heard about the, uh, the story about the, the drop of water into a stadium, uh, who knows about those, that story? I'm sure we'll have the, the answer soon, but it's a, very, it's a great way of, of putting perspective on what this exponential development that everything kind of based on, on silicon and on IT is driving right now. So the story is that you have a stadium, a soccer stadium, which is solid, uh, in, uh, in it, it can contain uh, water, um, and, and there's a drop coming down every once every minute. But each time the drop comes down, it doubles in size, okay? So every minute, twice, uh, twice the, the, the number of, of uh, twice the amount of water that you, uh, that you had prior. So after five minutes, it's about 60 drops. It's the bottom of a cup. So how long does it take before the whole stadium is filled up with water? I think we had somebody over there who knew the answer. But what do you think? Who wants to give a guess? It takes 49 minutes. Okay. So after five minutes, it's the bottom of a cup. And after 49 minutes, the whole stadium is full of water up to the, up to the roof. Okay. And, and this development has been going on for a long time now in technology, and you maybe feel that the progress is not really dramatic, but once you start hitting the end of that curve and, and the doubling uh, continues, then a lot of stuff happens. And that's really what's, what's driving what we're looking at here. So at the core here, we have the ability to handle massive amounts of data, uh, the ability to learn from that data, uh, the ability to store massive uh, amounts of data in the cloud and, and bring this out. And around that, you have the ability to apply, uh, to, to, so machine learning kind of taken to the next step. It's around analytics, around artificial intelligence and, and, and all these other things. And further out, the ability to bring this out into a mobile device, as, as Marek showed, that really changes things. 
the ability to show it, to visualize this data in virtual reality and, and to do voice recognition and video recognition, that also changes things. Uh, the, the, the compact size of sensors and the ability to send that in and store it, the data in the cloud, that, that leverages the whole Internet of Things. And there is a lot of other uh, elements out here that really kind of start to support actual business. So at the core, it's technology. It's driven by this exponential curve uh, of silicon. And at the outer ends, we're starting to get close to business. Who, is, who in here has heard about blockchain? Who knows what blockchain is? That's about maybe 5% of the audience. But blockchain is a technology that's also going to disrupt uh, you know, the finance industry and is going to support new ways of contracting uh, in our industry here. So there are some, some uh, technologies here at, 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 at the cusp of really becoming real business. So we looked at this when we started our, our uh, transformation here. And then we thought, let's take this out a little bit further. So when you have this mobile internet, the ability to put sensors in for nothing, uh, then you can start to really control your cars or your, your uh, other assets, your machines and stuff, and, and do that in an effective way. You can also, you know, given the fact that craftsmen have a smartphone in their pocket and they're ready to use it for really advanced things, then they can do quality management out there when they do their, their work. So they can document the fact that they did this uh, in, in uh, the right way. They can also calculate what things, uh, what the products are going to cost, what the time they're going to spend uh, is, is costing. So really, you can start to collect all this. And a craftsman can actually manage their whole job, manage their whole business in an iPad, in a phone. And we thought, that makes a difference. So we don't really necessarily care about big data. Uh, that's not the starting point. But if craftsmen manage their business in this way, does it make a difference? If they calculate their hours and they also buy their products and register those products on the project, and they can really start to improve their business and become more productive, then let's forget about what we do for them. That's what, that's what they are going to focus on. That really makes them more productive. Uh, and we need to understand what that means for us. And we need to be there with our products. So this was clearly not a task for our uh, IT department. So instead, we went out and we found a startup. We looked at 50 different startups. And we decided to invest in a company that really does this well. Okay? So we found a company called Minuba. It's a small startup. There was just maybe 15, 20 people at the time. But they did a really great cloud-based, really easy-to-use to solution that, helped, that, that supported a craftsman in managing their business. Okay? And these guys are very active on business development. And by us uh, associating with them, we can start to, uh, to, uh, to work together. We also looked at the Internet of Things and, um, and the fact that now you can start to understand more uh, about your, um, your, if you're an industry company, about your manufacturing uh, processes. And we found a company called Panoramic Power, which does a little clip, basically, that you could put on the outside of, a, of an electrical wire. And it doesn't have a battery. But just the fact that current runs through the, the, uh, the wire, there is a little uh, radio and a little sensor that powers up based on that. And then it will send the, uh, the amount of electricity running through to a central pickup point up to a cloud and out to an app. Okay? So basically, within, without having to interrupt anything in your uh, manufacturing plant, you can go around, put these clips on, and you know, before lunch, uh, basically, the, the plant manager has an app where they have full insight into the energy use of every single device that's powered by electricity. We thought that was disruptive, and it would open the eyes of customers on the journey of Internet of Things. It doesn't start with everybody buying the latest Internet of Things device, 
but it starts with understanding what actionable insight means in terms of improving your business. And this was a good way in uh, to that. There's also in residential, this was industry, but in residential it's about smart home. Uh, and we also thought software is an important piece there. Obviously at some point we will distribute the, the gadgets that go into your home uh, and we do that already. But software is going to have such a big impact, we went out and looked for companies that work with this. And we found in Norway a small company that does a software platform that actually does the intelligence of smart home. So it's a cloud platform, it's an app, uh, but the app could be tailored so uh, an energy firm who wants to deliver a smart home service on top of the energy or a phone company that wants to do something similar, they can work with Viva and they can get into the market very quickly. Uh, and we thought that was a good go-to-market model. And we can really understand you know, how the smart home uh, business develops uh, by working with them. Then there is uh, you know, products as a service, energy as a service. That's also an area we've been looking into, and, and especially around photovoltaic and energy storage. That's going to change the business model of, of uh, solar energy. And once you get into that, you really need to not only be able to provide the, the uh, materials, but also to, to have uh, the ability to sell and manage the projects uh, that uh, that delivers uh, you know such um, services, so we bought a company uh, that uh, that does exactly that. Around augmented reality and e-learning, there's also a um, a big uh, you know with uh, construction technology and all these new things, competence development is going to be central. Uh, so we invested in a company that, uh, that does exactly that. That's far away from our uh, traditional business, but clearly competence development is going to be key. At the bottom of this, uh, are in tying into big data and visualization and all these other things, you have something you know very well. So the whole area of, of, um, of building information modeling was also uh, a, uh, you know, also a very disruptive element that we thought we need to understand better. So therefore, earlier this year, we also invested in BIM objects. And we invested in another company that does uh, construction management, but done in the cloud with a very simple app and really uh, uh, tying into uh, and supporting uh, digital construction. So with this, we, uh, we, we, we really got access to a lot of knowledge and a lot of strong um, and, and uh, business development uh, capabilities. Does anyone know this guy? He looks quite smart. He invented the Netscape browser back in the day. His name is Mark Andreessen. Uh, and he said in 2011, software is eating the world. So basically that every industry is going to be impacted by software. And that happens when three things come together. First of all, the technology needs to be mature. So that's one thing. You also need to have standards and applications that, that are standards. Uh, and then you need incentives that really uh, give the great benefits. These three things need to come together. It's not technology only. It's not incentives only. It's those three things. And that's really what we are seeing uh, in the construction industry now. The incentives are very clear. The, the productivity development over the last uh, years, uh, when you look at manufacturing, they've been going up uh, by a factor of 1.7, while it's basically going backwards in construction. So output uh, today for $100 worth of effort is lower than it was. There are many things playing into this. And we've heard a lot about these things uh, today. And the thing is that when you look at our value chain, it's really a set of very discrete disciplines that are not working well together, right? So they're disconnected. Uh, but on top of that, there is a lot of conflict uh, in the value chain, all right? So people are, 
are basically fighting. It's kind of a zero-sum game. You make wins based on other people's losses, right? You come in with a low bid, uh, you win the bid, and then you make your profits on the change orders. And this is not really the whole complexity. Uh, we are down there with distributors and, and you know, the manufacturers are there as well. And there's, again, uh, not a lot of incentive to collaborate uh, and a lot of, of, of fighting going on. So the, the key central uh, uh, actor kind of managing this is a contractor. And uh, in construction, uh, you know, it's all about building. And Lego is a lot about building. They do thousands of Lego kits with all different kinds of names. Uh, and have you ever wondered why there isn't such a thing as a Lego contractor kit? So basically, the problem is it would look something like this, because contractors are really subcontracting a lot of the actual building. So inside, it's really more about kind of keeping your subcontractors in place with contracts. And I don't mean Weidegg, and, <laughs> and I don't mean Riksbygel here, because they are obviously doing it in a smarter way. But the fundamental thing is whether we need our, the contracting to change in order for us to really realize the benefits of digital construction. When you talk about the productivity problems and you look at the level of digitalization in the industry, there is a very clear uh, correlation here. And as we've heard earlier, construction is right at the bottom. So fishing and hunting and agriculture is actually more digitized than the construction industry. So it's very clear where the opportunities are going to come from and how digital construction is a very essential element in driving productivity up. And there are many drivers, as we've heard about today, that are going to make that happen. So what's going to happen is that, that we are all in these disciplines going to come together working with BIM software uh, and, and those standards in order to collaborate more. And this is going to drive transparency. And that transparency means that you're going to see contractors and building owners get a lot more control of what's going to uh, go into the buildings and the whole building um, process. And, you know, if you're a manufacturer and you see that you know, all this pain and all this uh, conflict and you, you know, there's a lot of, you know, how many manufacturers do we have in here? Who is a manufacturer supplying products? How many of you see BIM object as an opportunity to actually skip over all this pain and all this struggle and get straight into the, the, uh, the realm of, of the building owner and, uh, and, and the, the contractor basically skipping over everything? And that makes a lot of sense, but I hope that you also realize that a lot of the efficiencies here are only going to happen if we really start to work together to try and make this smarter. Okay? And when you look at, at digital construction uh, and, and you're a company in that value chain, uh, then it may seem like there is a, a lot of threats, but we also see there is a lot of opportunity. The fact is that with all this digital, in the end, there still needs to be products supplied and, and, and there is an opportunity here uh, around that. So the, you still need to find your product, you still need to do your marketing, you still need to, to, uh, to, to buy the product, you need to collect them. Uh, you don't want a hundred different trucks arriving uh, you know, with deliveries. Uh, you want uh, these uh, products to be uh, delivered in an intelligent way in order to support uh, your, your better processes. So all these things are going to happen. And for us, we see the opportunities that this, this, with this network of, of, of companies that we've now associated with, we see the opportunity to make this happen in new ways. So having at, at the core, um, your, or at the bottom there, you see how solar will, we have strong competences on some of these uh, Elements, BIM Object has other strength, Genie Belt has strength around project management documentation. So the notion, you know, that you have a model and you can integrate that model with the plan 
And that plan sits in the cloud, uh, and, and it really coordinates uh, you know, or, or gives you a, a sense of where is this construction project at this very moment. So connecting the model where you have your products, right, and you have the structure of the building, and you have your plan, you know actually when you make that connection, when every single building component needs to go where in the house and which team needs it at what time. So for us to have that information, we can really start to, to deliver uh, products and, and apply our logistics in, in, in much more intelligent ways and supporting uh, productivity. And I was really blown away by the presentation this morning about BIM.com, about the lists, uh, and about spaces and opening the API up, because that really opens the door for small uh, startups to, to tap into this and really deliver enterprise strength services. Uh, and I think that's really going to be disruptive for the software industry and or for the construction industry and really accelerate uh, this uh, digital construction opportunity. So we are very active on, on, on driving business development with these small startups. Uh, very, and, and this is becoming very concrete business to us uh, in, a, in, in a bigger way. So my message to you is really that, as we see, the technology is here. I mean, we have also the standards and we have the incentive. There is so much money uh, to be made uh, for this to get into construction. And what I want you to, uh, to leave with is this is ready to pilot now. We are seeing the first movers really adopting this uh, this BIM and, 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 and all these pieces are coming together. And we've seen today on stage uh, contractors, local contractors here who are actively uh, doing this. Uh, and, uh, and it's really a, a question of making the decision to step into it. So that is my final uh, message to you. Go and pilot and, and let's work together in order to, to make this a reality. Thank you.